Hi, it's me again with Corel Draw Tips and Tricks. And somebody sent me this logo and asked for a little bit of help. And he knows what the font is, but it's a an Adobe product and you'd have to buy it. And it traces okay, depending on how big your it is. You could actually bring in a, an example of it and see what the letters look like, but you can always change the R's. So Normally when I do, when you do a logo like this, you go up to bitmap and resample it, and it's already at 300. So we're just gonna trace it. We're not gonna change the color or anything. We're gonna outline trace clip art. And it traced it pretty good. Now immediately when you do something like this, you're gonna wanna take your Rectangle, make a yellow box, go up to object, go to order, put back a page. And then you'll see the white that is in the logo. And if it's a, if you're gonna engrave this, that would cause you a little bit of problems. So we're gonna ungroup group everything and we're just gonna take the white away. And you could do this several different ways. Um, you could actually use a find and replace, but there's not that many and then we're gonna take a deeper look at this and get the magnifying glass. And there's a couple of gray shadows. And because we've got it broken apart, we can take those away. That would cause you a little bit of problem when you're engraving it, so you need to look at each letter. I think that's all of them. The larger letters engraved, good. And we'll do this one. And depending on how big you're gonna make this is a lot of the difference. Uh, we can also see that this is a RGB black. I, I would change them all to a pure black, as you can see the difference between those two. So what we can do, let's just get this other one out of the way. There's a little bit of a problem with the trace on this line. Uh, it did a pretty good job, but it's, it's, it's messed up a little bit. So we're gonna extend our box out a little bit, and we're gonna take that leaf and we're gonna move it over. And this one actually needs to be black. This one needs to be gray, because he's gonna engrave it like a shadow. But we're not gonna really care about it yet, because we're gonna do something a little bit different. So first of all, we need to probably fix this, what it didn't engrave. In this, since you've got it all broken together, you can take that one and delete it. Circle those two, right click, and convert it to a line. There are several ways you could do this. My suggestion would be just take all those away. You might be changing the logo just a hair, but if you don't do this, there's gonna be some problem. So I've added it out, I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker. Because when we make this gray, and we bring this other one on back on top of it, the gray, the gray is over the top of the black. Now we could put it back a page, but that's not what we wanna do in this case. So in this case, we wanna take that gray, we're gonna bump, take the gray and bump it over. And we're gonna get all the gray and bump it over. I'm gonna get rid of my yellow box we don't need anymore. And I'm gonna make an outline of this leaf. Whoop. No color in outline. Bump it back over. And you can see the line, even though th these are hairlines are really little. Now, here's kind of the key. As long as we get this gray inside that black, the way we're gonna do it is a little bit different. Everything else looks okay. We're gonna smart fill this now with a gray and then it will not go in, out past that line. So let's nudge that over twice, nudge that over twice and nudge that over twice. Now we can take away this outline. Now grab all this and nudge it back and you'll see that now the the gray is just up to the edge of that black. 
Now, my suggestion would be maybe, you know, you can go to the internet and type that font in. And, and the only ones that kind of look bad are the E's and the R's. Uh, I think everything else would be suitable. So you can change that, you know, the way it looks a little bit, depending on, you know, the, the Adobe font and do things like this to kind of make it look more natural. We could always use the smooth tool. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And we can just smooth out some of the, I don't know what the font looks like. Now, don't forget, we need to change everything to a good black. So we're gonna nudge this out of the way for a second. We're gonna select everything and right click an RGB black and now it's all pure black. Now, here's kind of the key, and um, I do this all the time. Now, you could color map this, but I guarantee this will be the best way to do it. Let's make it a little bit bigger. And let's say this is what we're going to engrave, and let's say we're going to engrave it on... I'll tell you what, let's uh, move it up here to where we're going to engrave it. And we're going to engrave this. And some people don't believe in this. And I just noticed that the, the P has a little bit of a weird outline there. And you can see things like that when you move it. I could just, I don't know if I can reduplicate that. But a lot of times, well, one, you're looking at it in wireframe when you're moving it. So here's what I would do. This gray, I'm going to bump up. Well, let me change my nudge factor to something like five inches. I'm going to jump this up, jump that up, jump that up. And then I'm going to control G and I'm going to group it together. I would engrave this at go deep and go like 100 power at 50 speed. Then take this out of the way and bring this in and run it on a separate job at like 100 power, 100 speed. And then that way, the reason I like this over color mapping, if you need to run it again, you can just run it again if it's not quite deep enough. It's a shadow, so you want it to kind of look like a shadow. You don't want it to look like an object. Other than that, I think this will work. Hope that helped them a little bit. Thank you for watching.